Hi there everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Autism Puzzle. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a few ways that we, as parents, can try to de-stress from our hectic lives. So the first tip I have to help you de-stress is just by simply talking to someone. Whether it's a therapist, a best friend, one of your parents, um, another family member, I mean, whoever is willing to lend you their ear just so you can vent the day, the week, the year, the month, <laughs> whatever you need to vent and get it out, it does a world of good. I have done both, actually. I have talked with family members and friends, and I've also gone to a therapist over the years um, after my son was diagnosed. I went for quite a while because there were days where it just, I just felt like I had nothing else left in me. And it was just so stressful the days that I would have things go wrong with Logan, whether it was therapy at home or something he did at school or on the bus or, you know, just something throughout the day that it just weighed on me and it just kept weighing me down and weighing me down. The best thing you can do is, is talk to somebody. Find a good friend that's willing to just let you just vent for a little bit and not judge you. Just just let you get it out because it's it's hard keeping that all in. I've I've been there more times than I can count, and I still do it because I, I don't always like to let people in, but there's times where even if it's just me talking to my husband, he'll just let me sit and just vent. Because I'm at the point where I'm like, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Where there's days where I just want to scream and I just want to run away. But we as parents can't do that because there's nobody else to take care of our child but us. And that is a scary, scary thing to think about. But that is our job. So talking to someone definitely helps. Like I said, whether it's a friend, a therapist, family member. Go and talk to someone. Get it out. Because you can't just let it sit inside you. It just makes it worse. And then it can sometimes come out when you're taking care of your child. You can have all this anger built up. And sometimes we take it on our kids not meaning to. And that's not fair to them. Because they're, they're only trying to do what they can to you know navigate everything. And they're trying their hardest. And we need to do the same. So... We got to take care of ourselves that way. So find a friend, find a family member, find a therapist, find someone to talk to that's willing to let you just chew their ear off for a while so that you can just de-stress for a little bit. Um, Cause it, it truly does help. Um, it does. I've talked to lots of people and it, and it does help to finally feel like you get that weight off your shoulders. You feel 10 times better and it's better for your family and better for your kids when you feel so much better and don't have that stress weighing on you. So keep that in mind. Another tip is, and one that's really hard for me, is asking for help from people. I am not one to ask for help from people because I don't want people to think that I can't handle the life I've been given. Because there's days where I know I can't. <laughs> and I have to do it anyway. But asking for help is something that we as autistic parents need to do more of. We need to ask people for help on the tough days. On the days where we're just drained. Where we just don't think we can do anymore. Ask somebody for help. Um, I've started doing it a, quite a little bit more with my husband. I don't always ask him for help when he bugs me about it all the time because <laughs> he tells me, I know you're tired, but you won't ask me for help. He's like, and I want to help you. And then you get mad because I help you. And I do. He's right. I do get mad because I don't like people seeing that I have a weak side, that I'm not able to do certain things when I know I will do whatever it takes, even if it means I have to die trying. I am so stubborn. <laughs> but we as parents, we need to understand when we need help. 
If you're having a rough day and your child's just had the massivest meltdown and you're just at your wit's end, ask somebody if, if you can get, you know, a 20 minute break or, you know, see if there's someone that could watch your child for an hour just so you could go cry or just take a nap or, or just sit with your thoughts for a little bit and just try to, you know, find yourself again, um, whatever it takes. I know it's hard for some people. It's very hard for me to ask for help. Very hard. Um, it's not something that comes easy for me, asking for help. And I'm sure a lot of other people out there are the same way. That it's not easy asking someone for help because then they, you feel like they're judging you that, you know, you should be able to handle this. You do this every day. I do do my job every day with Logan. But that does not mean that I'm not tired, exhausted, ready to call it quits. Um, but I, I just know that there's no other, there's nobody else out there. And there's nobody else that can do this job better than I can. And I just need to understand sometimes as well as other parents out there need to understand that there's just sometimes where we just need to let our guard down just a little bit and say, you know what? I need to ask for help today because it's just been a really long day and I could just use just, you know, 10, 15 minutes just to... Just to, just to relax, just, you know, for a little. Because it is hard taking care of a special needs child. It is not something easy. Um, everybody thinks we're just equipped to do this every day, and we're not. We're not equipped. There's days we cry. There's days we scream. There's days, there's actually a lot of days. <laughs> I've told Mitchell, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I don't want to do this. And I don't have a choice. My child needs me to be there for them, and I will be there for them. I may lose my mind in the process, <laughs> but I will be there for my child. So ask for help as best as you can. Just try to ask for help. Um, whatever amount of time you're able to get to just take a break, take it. Because you won't get those breaks very often. So just ask for help, people. It You need to ask for help. <laughs> Me especially, but other parents out there with autistic children, we need to ask for help. We need we need it. So let's do it. <laughs> All right. So another tip for you is to find a hobby. A lot of special needs parents find it hard to find time for themselves. Um, if you can find time for yourself after your kids go to bed, find yourself a hobby. <laughs> um, whether it's reading a book, doing some type of craft, um, making something on the side and selling it, something. Something that makes you happy. Not that taking care of your child doesn't make you happy. But you need something that at the end of the day makes you excited about. Like for me, it's working on my cross stitch. Um, my mother-in-law showed me how to do it a couple years ago. I've been doing it ever since. Once the kids go to bed, that is my time. I have an hour to myself if my husband doesn't need me or wanna spend time with me <laughs> or doesn't have something else he has to do. Um, that is my time. We try to set an hour aside for each of us at night. Um, once the kids go to bed, he goes and works on whatever he wants to work on. I work on what I want to work on for an hour. And then after that, you know, if we're tired, we go to bed or we spend time together after that. But we try to make time for just ourselves to do something we want to do, whether it's reading a book or just going for a walk or just going over the store and just walking around. Whatever makes you happy, you need to find some type of hobby. Join a a support group or something for um, parents with special needs children. They have those out there. Um, if you want, you can go to church if that makes you happy. Go to, you know, nighttime, whatever, whatever time of day if that makes you happy. Um, I mean, just anything. Find something that makes you happy. Um, I used to do photography when the kids were little. I would just drive around the parks and that and just take pictures because it made me happy. It was my time to make something beautiful. 
and it just made me happy going and exploring. Um, you could go hiking. Um, you could go exercise. Um, just something, whatever makes you happy, go and do it. Take time for yourself. And I know that's hard for some people. It's hard for me to do it. Because when the kids go to bed at night, I know some parents are trying to play catch up. And I've been there. I have a lot of nights where I don't take time for myself and I know I should. And my husband yells because the laundry can wait. The kitchen can wait. The house, yeah, it's trash from the kids and all of us. He said, but you know what? We need time. You need time for just you. So even if you just sit there and stare at the ceiling or the wall or watch TV, take time for you. And my husband's right. We need to, as parents, try to find time, no matter how small, even if it's five minutes. Take some time for yourself. Take some time that's just for you every single day if you can. If not, every other day. Or set, see if there's someone that can watch that you trust can watch your child so you and your husband can go out if that's feasible. If not, like I said, if you can take five minutes to just find time that's just for you, something that you enjoy and love to do, do it. Because it'll make you happier and it will relieve some of the stress that we as parents carry every single day. Doing something we enjoy instead of something that we know we have to do. Um, my cross stitch makes me happy because I can sit there and it's a calming, repetitive motion that I can just, yep, I can do it for hours. <laughs> and I have when the boys were younger. I've done it for hours and it was quite relaxing. <laughs> um, but I mean, just like I said, just find something that's just for you. Um, we we got to find time for ourselves or else we're going to lose our minds. Um because we don't want that because our kids need us. And we need to be there for them. So we also need to take care of ourselves. So like I said, five minutes. Or if you can find it somehow feasible. <laughs> for someone to watch your kid for a little bit. Then go. Go and take time for you. Because we need it as parents. And it's important that we have that. Because it's important for us to be okay. So we can be there for our children. All right. So my favorite and last one I'm going to talk about of how to de-stress. Listening to music. That is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> it is wonderful. If your child can handle your music um, and they're not affected by it, whatever it is, or they enjoy it, play some music. It just makes everything better. I am one of those crazy metalhead mothers. <laughs> My tastes are from the 60s to 80s to the alternative music now. <laughs> I have been told that some parents may know this movie, but the Monsters University movie, I joke that in the one scene where they... Um, all the monsters go inside and the mom waits out in the van and she rolls up her window and she listens to like this really heavy metal music. That's me. <laughs> Especially now that I've gotten my van. That is me. When I go to pick up the kids, you can hear how loud my music is from outside my van. My speaker system is apparently really good. <laughs> so I will sit there and listen to um, Linkin Park, Ozzy Osbourne. Um, a lot of the 60s and 80s, I like The Doors. They're like my favorite band ever. Um, Nickelback. I mean, just anything. It just it just makes you feel better. It really does. Listening to music does... I've never seen anybody unhappy listening to music unless it's um, maybe the Baby Shark song. <laughs> um, or something from Blippi. But other than that... Find music that you love and listen to it. Crank it if you can with your children. Um, dance if you need to. I mean, I'm I'm in my car and I'm just, yeah. <laughs> People think I'm crazy when I'm driving because I'm headbanging while I'm driving because I'm just, I'm in my happy place. <laughs> it just makes me happy. And I can scream and cry if I need to because it's heavy metal and that's what they do. They scream. So I'm right there with them. So, 
listen to music. Um, even if it's a kid's song um, and you like it, which there's not many out there that I like. Um, I'm kind of tired of the Baby Shark song, actually. <laughs> but occasionally I'll, you know, I'll just kind of let it go just so I can kind of get that out because, I mean, it helps tremendously. Um, you just never see an unhappy person listening to music unless it's a song they really hate. Um, so that is one of my last tips is to find some music, put it on a playlist, put it on your phone, in your car, your radio, and crank it up, people. Um, just, just, yeah, just listen to music because, I mean, it just, it, it can only help you, really. <laughs> and like I said, if you like the alternative music like I do and you need to scream or cry, crank it and scream and then people will just think you're just singing to the music. So they'll never know. <laughs> Um, but that is my last tip for this video. Thank you as always for watching my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Also check out my Facebook page, Autism Puzzle. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.